Welcome to week three of King's Spotlight. We're here today with King's football coach, Jeff Narr. Coach, big win last week against Lycoming College. Congratulations on that. And of course, a big, big game this coming weekend with the traditional MAC power, Delaware Valley College. But before we get to Del Valle, let's talk a little bit about Lycoming. Last week, the Monarchs went down to Williamsport and won for the first time at David Person Field with an exciting 41-28 victory. So talk about that game. Yeah, it was really exciting uh, for our kids, and, and we told them afterwards that we won the game, we felt, um, by the work they did in the summer, you know, because it was hot, um, and then, you know, we, you know, our tempo, you know, needed to be fast, and, um, you know, the, the style that Lakeo plays, they want to pound you and then beat you up, you know, that way, so whoever, you know, the strong was going to survive from there, and I thought our kids handled the, the heat very well, and that's attributed to you know, the work they, they did in the summer. But, um, you know, to see our kids, you know, fall behind uh, to, you know, to a traditional power team and, and not fold and, and be resilient, you know, as they always are, and then, you know, pound back and then, you know, extend the lead in the second half to really put Lyco to do things they don't want to do uh, was great to see. And then, you know, to take over on downs and then get that final touchdown to put the final nail in the coffin and, and finish, which was we were big on talking to our kids about, uh, to see them do that was well, was really exciting and, and you know proud of them to get their you know first ever win for the program you know up at a tough place to to play. Well, in the first half in the second quarter in particular, you're down by two scores, and then you went on to end the first half with two straight scores, including one with under a minute left, and then you came out in the second half and scored the first two times you had the ball. So you had four unanswered scores to take a pretty comfortable lead at that point. So talk about the resiliency it took for the team to rebound from a two point or two two-score deficit to come back and put four on the board. Yeah, well, I think we talked the mentality. You know, it's kind of a fourth-quarter mentality a little bit where, you know, if we're behind, you know, two scores or less, that mentality is that we're going to find a way to win the game. So that applies throughout the, the four quarters. And in the style, you know, that we're you know, playing offensively where you're playing fast and you're getting plays, you're going to have opportunities to, you know, to, you're never going to be, you know, too far away to, to get points and don't need a whole lot of time to get yourself in position to, to get points. So our kids, you know, you know, understanding that and, and then executed, you know, those things really well. And then, you know, they got a sense that, you know, their tempo was good and, and Lyco was getting tired uh, at the end of the half um, and scored. And we came out and, you know, that's a big emphasis again, starting the way, the second half, the way you started the game, you know, and, and get after them. And our kids responded well and uh, set up by great, you know, kick return by, you know, by freshman Devin Weidman. Got us a great field position to go out and score. You know, our defense gets excited about that. They got to stop and then, you know, be able to put it again together and score again. So it's kind of seeing all three phases working together uh, to, to get that lead. Well, the offense did a great job in the game with over 500 yards of the game. But talk about the defense. The defense gave up some yardage, but they came up with some huge plays, particularly two monstrous fourth down stops to prevent Lycoming like, from scoring. Just talk about them stepping up at that key moment. Yeah, I mean, our D, I thought they did a, did a great job, you know, all day. I mean, that, uh, you know, Bowman's maybe one of the best backs, if not the best back in the conference. And um, his longest run of the day was 11 yards. So our, our kids did a good job of containing the run, and then, you know, which Lyco loves to do. And then, you know, those fourth down stops, um, you know, they put themselves in position, and it was just a matter of, you know, make, go, make, go make a play. And we had numerous guys that were very physical, uh, anticipate the snap count, fill in the, the holes, uh, real well, and then you know to get a knockback when they run straight ass was awesome. And then they tried to run around us, and we strung that out and dropped them for a three-yard loss. Uh, they were huge stops because then our offense was able to take the ball, you know, back and 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 move it, uh, and and you know I think got a score in the one, and then move it enough times they run clock and field position, you know, and make a a ball control offense have to do something more than they want. So I, I thought our defense uh, came up huge, you know, when they had to and played solid. Uh, you know, overall, and, and forced Lyco to throw twice as many times as they did the week before and, and what they did with us last year, um, which is not something they, they want to do. Well, looking ahead to this week's game, got a big game at Delaware Valley coming in. Now, the first two games that your team has played this season, you played a very good, experienced Moravian team that was 8-3 and three last year, lost the opener. Last week, played a traditionally outstanding Lycoming team and got the win on the road. This week, you're playing perhaps arguably the best program in the MAC over the last 13, 15 years, Delaware Valley. So you have a team that has gone, since the past 13 years, are 117-32 and 32 and won six MAC titles. So talk about your first two games preparing you for a game like this. It definitely helps. Um, you know, when you play, you know, good people, you get, you get, you know, that experience. Um, you kind of get a barometer, a test of, of where you're at. 
uh, and what you need to do. So, you know, our kids have been tested. We, you know, Moravian, again, is, you know, one of the top teams in the Centennial. Their offense is as explosive as we're going to gonna see. And so we were able to see what we didn't do and, and some of the things we did well in the second half and, and build on that and correct that, which we kind of saw in the, in the Lyco game. And then, yeah, go to a place that's great home field advantage, never won, and to get a win, you know, gives our kids confidence, um, you know, that you know, what we're doing is working, what they're doing is working, and then they have the confidence moving forward, you know, to, the, you know it's their opportunity to come out and play a nationally ranked team and, and one of the best teams, you know, over the last, like you said, 15 years in the MAC, and have an opportunity to play with them, you know, knowing that they've been in two, you know, good, good opponents the last two games, and so they're kind of battle-tested, prepared, know they're in for a 60-minute, you know, uh, battle, and then, you know, looking for that opportunity to... To, to do that on Saturday. Well, Kings enters the game with a one and one overall record and are one and zero in the MAC. Delaware Valley, meanwhile, is two and zero and one and zero in the MAC. Delaware Valley themselves had a really impressive first win in their opening game of the year when they beat Wesley College, who was ranked seventh nationally entering that game by a twenty-one to fourteen margin. And Delaware Valley beat Misericordia last week pretty handily, forty-six to seven. And they enter this game ranked 14th nationally. So I just talk about how Delaware Valley has has developed into a strong, strong power over the years. Yeah, I mean, watching that you know Wesley game, there was, there was a lot of talent uh, on the field, and um, you know Delaware they're big on on both sides of the ball. They're very physical, um, you know, and I've you know having played Wesley uh, numerous times when I was at Muhlenberg, you know, know the caliber of opponent they are, and and you know the things that was impressive is you know Delaware kind of thought owned the line of scrimmage. Um, and also had enough speed, you know, to get behind Wesley on certain times and, and be able to run around them. So, you know, they're big and they're physical, but then DelVal still has their, their, their weapons of, of, you know, their athletes that possess great, you know, great speed that can get vertical, uh, you, know, you know, pretty quickly. And that was, you know, evident in the Misericordia uh, game when, you know, the wide receiver took the opening kickoff and, you know, crossed the face of the kickoff team and found a hole and, and, and hit the gas and, and was gone. So, you know, they can beat you up and be physical because they're big and strong on both sides of the ball, but then they're athletic enough to run to the ball defensively and then athletic enough to hit that big play uh, with their offense. Well, in the rivalry with Kings and Delaware Valley, Del Val has won two of the last three games. Last season, it was a very close game at halftime, and the Aggies came out in the second half and, out, and held us off the board and took a 26-10 to 10 win. So, Looking back at that game, talk about some of the things that we did well, but then some of the things that we struggled with in the second half. Yeah, and um, it's about making plays. So when you're playing somebody the caliber of of Del Val, you got to be able to you know seize the opportunities when when they present themselves. And and Del Val was able to you know uh, run through some tackles that we had and turn you know I think probably they have routine type runs, turn into big big play runs for them. And then we came up a little bit short here in time. I mean, two times the official literally pulled out his card and put it between the football and the first down marker to see whether we got the first down. And unfortunately, both times we were about a credit card with uh, short of extending drives. And one time was, you know, inside, uh, inside the 15, I think we got stopped. So we have to be able to seize those opportunities and be able to finish drives and not fall, you know, inches short when you're playing a team, you know, like Del Valle. And that was kind of the, you know, the second half. And then in the first half, you know, we had to settle for a field goal. We had a guy wide open in the end zone and, and threw it at his ankles. Um, and not in the chest, so then we have to kick a field goal. So again, we have to be able to, you know, not commit unforced errors, you know, and, and be able to keep the ball ball in front of us, and then finish, you know, finish drives and, and seize, you know, the opportunities when they present themselves. You know, be able to make plays uh, when, when they arise. Well, Delaware Valley's offense is currently ranked ranked third in the MAC at 35 points a game, but that on paper looks like a team that has a lot of talent, but not necessarily any real superstars. They have a good quarterback in Deshaun Darden, but they have a horde of runners and receivers who don't have a lot of stats. When you pile them all up together as a team, the numbers are very impressive. Yeah, I mean, they're getting well balanced. They bring in two running backs um, that are both you know, exceptional. They're fast. That They run hard. Um, you know, the quarterback can, can run with the football as well. And then they have, you know, again, receivers that can get vertical, but then they run jet sweeps with, with other receivers. So, you know, they have playmakers, and that's what you want offensively. And then, you know, their job as, as the coaches is to spread the ball to their playmakers. And then, you know, the quarterback's job, again, is to, is to be able to distribute it to the guys from there. So they've done a good job of um, spreading the ball around the guys that can make plays, which, again, you know, is a challenge for, you know, a defense in that you know, you got to be able to, you know, defend the pass, defend the run, and then defend, you know, all the individuals. You just can't take one guy out of the equation because they have, they have answers if, if you do. Looking at Delaware Valley, statistically, Darden has completed 71.8% of his passes. That's an outstanding number. 
for 491 yards and three touchdowns. But he's a kid that is a multi-level player. Like you said, he can throw the ball. He can run the ball. He's very, very dangerous. Yeah, last year we played him. They started a different kid, and they were working him in as, like, the Wildcat quarterback guy. And then, you know, I think he took over after our game at some point in time for, for them. But I think he was, you know, more of a runner. Now the thing, you know, that's impressed us is the, you know, the improvement – you know, the little bit of film we had off of last year leading into that game to watching him now, he's obviously improved his throwing as, you know, he's the guy and, you know, they're a little more balanced, you know, with him. He doesn't run it as as much. Um, and then, you know, he's, he's accurate with, the, with his throws. And, again, he's throwing it to a lot of different guys. And when you complete 70% to the guys they have, you know, good things are happening. So he went from what we thought, you know, was the, their Wildcat quarterback in, in our game to now being their quarterback. And then when you watch him play, you see a quarterback. You don't just see an athlete you know, running around back there. He can throw the ball. He can run the ball. He's very athletic, but he also understands the position of quarterback and is doing a very good job early in the year. Well, Delaware Valley defense, meanwhile, they're actually playing very well, too. They're leading the MAC in scoring defense as teams have scored only 10.5 per games against them. They're also third in total defense in the MAC and allowing 329.5 yards a game. And they're also fourth against the run at 145 yards and fifth against the pass at 184. So pretty good balanced defense. So talk about what they do on defense in particular. They also have a junior safety named Shaw Miller, who's leading the team with 16 tackles, and he also has three interceptions this early in the season. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're big. Um, their safeties are like the size of our linebackers. Some of our linebackers are the size of our, of our D-line guys. Um, so they bring size, but they can move. You know, the, 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 um, they run the ball well. Um, you know, they'll, they'll hit you. So they, they have the physicalness where, you know, they're going to be stout, you know, against the run. You try to go right at them. Um, but then you try to think, all right, well, they're big. Maybe we can get outside of them or, or run vertical on them. And then they have the athleticism and speed to, you know, to defend those, those plays as well. So they're very, uh, you know, balanced, a, a complete defense. They're very aggressive, uh, you know, and, and they, they've been doing a good job. Looking back to Kings and what we've been doing this year, particularly on offense, after two weeks, we're ranked first in the MAC in scoring it. 38 points per game, and also on total yards at 497 per game. That's also a top 10 national total in passing at 407 yards per game. Zach Whitehead's done a great job completing 70 of 109 passes with 814 yards and five touchdowns. We've got a real good balance in terms of our wide receiver play. Mike Palmer, 17 catches. Tyler Maroney, 17 catches. Matt DeMarco, 10. And Marcus Miller for eight. Let's so talk about the varied attack that you guys have been able to be successful with so far this season. Yeah, with us, um, you know, every year we sit down and figure out, you know, who our playmakers are and, and how do we get them the ball. And, you know, this year when we were deep and talented at, at wide receiver, um, so it was, you know, be able to get find ways to get those guys on the field together and, then, you know, and then work with our quarterback to spread the ball around. And, and again, Zach... You know, no one watches more films, studies, prepares as well as he does, you know, understands our offense and be able to distribute the ball, which has been very good to see and, and help us and will help us, you know, down the line in that, you know, you can't take, you know, the same thing with Delvao. You can't take one of the guys away. They have answers saying we feel the same way. You know, Palmer was a big, you know, element in the Moravian game in most catches. You know, and then, you know, on Saturday, Tyler Maroney stepped up and, and had a huge day. And we always have a good supporting cast to get that. We've been able to distribute the ball to, to you know, those four guys. Plus, Trey Campbell had a huge, huge day on, on Saturday. We're able to throw to our, our backs. So, you know, Zach's development and, and maturity and understanding of our offense has enabled him to see the game at a slower pace and then, you know, see who's open, go through his progressions and then distribute the ball to a very talented and, and deep receiving core. So the strength of our offense is, is exceeding, uh, you know, our expectations and playing at a, at a high level, and, you know, they're working hard to continue to do so. Well, with a defense that is as stout as Delaware Valley, as you need balance on offense, so you're definitely going to need more than the passing game. So talk about how important it's going to be for Zach Funk and Alvante Thompson to do on the ground. Yeah, those two, and then, you know, the five guys up front uh, to get them going from there. The same, you know, philosophies be effective and efficient, you know, when, when we run the football. Um, and, you know, be able to take a run and, and realize four yards or five yards, that's a big play against the type of uh, the defense that Delva has. That's going to help stay on schedule, move the chains, keep us in dead distances where we have all our plays at our, our, our disposal, uh, you know, from, from there. So it'll be key to 
be be efficient and effective, you know, with our with our running attack. And those guys are working real hard, uh, you know, with their vision and in the line. We saw good physicality. We ran the ball, I think, five touchdowns. Um, you know, converted some fourth downs or right running the ball. So you know, our O line is you know we're becoming more physical, uh, be more efficient, and effective when when we run the football because we need you know need to be able to run it from from there. I mean, we're not a 50-50. Uh, deal, you know, right now. But when we, you know, when we dial a run, you know, it's it's got to be effective, and and you know, they're improving week in and week out with that. Well, the Kings defense is definitely going to have a challenge against us, a uh, very balanced and athletic Delaware Valley offense. So let's talk about a couple of those players. Uh, sophomore linebacker Bruce Damon had a huge game against Lycoming last week with 16 tackles and three sacks. And he was also named to the D3Football.com Team of the Week. So talk about his play so far. Yeah, I mean, it was a tremendous honor. I think, you know, in the first time in my coaching career in college, we've had somebody make a, you know, a D3.com you know, team, and it was well-deserved. And the thing we liked about our defense is, you know, we had a bunch of guys that didn't play to the level that we think they can play at on that uh, against Moravian. You know, and, and we told them so. And to a man, they all responded tremendously well uh, against like homing and um, and Bruce in particular, you know, and he came out and you know did the things we, we thought he could do because he's explosive, he's powerful, but he's so fast and, and athletic. And a lot of times he would just be able to run past you know Lakos defenders. He harassed the quarterback all day. Got three sacks. Uh, has very instinctive you know to the football, which all good linebackers do. So next thing you know, he's 11 solo tackles. Uh, it was just great to see him playing. The football that, that we know we're, we're capable of playing, and then you know our defense, you know, fed off of that, and everybody, you know, rose up and, and stepped up and did well in the pass as he was under 50 percent. You know, controlled the run against Lakeo, and then had uh, you know those big stops from there. So it was good to see our defense respond, and you know, led by Bruce, who had a, a monster game and a, and a well-deserved uh, you know honor to making the D3.com play uh, team of the week. One of the things that is noticeable about your defense this year is that there are a lot of players rotating into the game. You, know, you have your core starters, but then you have other players that are coming off the bench and doing jobs just as well. And then you have senior linebacker Bobby Russell, who's also leading the way. You got a freshman, Joe Davis, who's really doing well with 12 tackles. Veteran, Hassan Maxwell. Freshman, Eli Vasco's. Senior, Tyler Majasic. Junior, Ryan Milianica. Sophomore, Chris Digatano, and sophomore, C.J. Curry. So a lot of players doing a lot of good things out there. Absolutely. We feel we're, we're deep in the D-line. And you know, if you are not too deep in our D-line, you're going to be rotating and, and playing anyway. But I think we're able to play seven, eight guys you know, on our defensive line right now, which is huge, especially like last night in the heat uh, and against any team that's going to try to you know, run the football. And DelVal you know, wants to definitely establish the, the run. So we're deep enough in the D-line where we can keep guys fresh and keep rotating them in. And then you know, we talked about the other two levels that keeps to develop and, and get as many varsity caliber guys we can and play them on Saturday. Because we talked about the more guys we can play, the well-rested we are and the better we're going to play. So at outside linebacker, it's really good to see. We moved C.J. Curry from quarterback to, to outside linebacker, um, and he's responded tremendously well. He's, he's a good football player, and he's taken well to that. You know, Malcolm Johnson is a young outside linebacker that's rising up, and they're able to you know, help uh, Hassan and, and Gonzo, those four guys, give us four good outside linebackers we can rotate throughout the game. You know, then the two guys in the middle, and Hassan can go in the middle. You know, Spell, Brennan Ryan's coming along well, so we're developing depth at the linebacker spot. And then you know, we have three safeties that can play, so that's huge to be able to give those guys you know, rest because they're also heavily involved in, in our kick game. So Joe Davis stepping up to complement you know, Jake Manetti and, and, and Stanton uh, at the safety spot, and then having three Three corners with you know Majesic as the the grizzled veteran there, the fifth year guy, and then you know Foster, and then now you know Eli, you know stepping up from from that deal. So the more guys that we can get in the game uh, that can play at a varsity level, the better we're going to be from a defensive standpoint. Well, in this game, the defense is certainly going to be challenged with a very multifaceted Delaware Valley offense, which uses a lot of misdirection, sweeps, bubble screens, all kinds of different things. So what's the key for them? on the Kings defense to be successful? Well, one, we have to, you know, tackle better than we did last year because like, they had a bunch of long, you know, runs and it was basically running through tackles. So our guys, you know, we got to be able to tackle the ball carrier, uh, you know, better from there. And then work really hard to keep, like we same with Lyco, keep the ball in front of us. I mean, they have great speed, you know, at the wide receiver standpoint and not give them, you know, a big play, a, a cheap play from, from that deal. Try to make them, you know, earn it and, and have to move the ball in, in small chunks um, because then we feel our defense is good enough that we're going to be able to create, you know, a stop, you know, along the way uh, from, from that deal. So if we tackle better, keep the ball in front of us, make them, you know, have to move it in small chunks down the field, you know, then we're going to give ourselves a good, a good chance. Well, Coach, Saturday is our home debut. The Kings College Monarchs will debut at McCarthy Stadium for the first time this season. 
against Delaware Valley College at 1 o'clock in a MAC contest. Good luck to you and Kings on Saturday, and best wishes to all the Monarch players.